Well then, if you're interested in in-game activities and wanting to really push your builds further with Archon Shard rewards, then this is the video for you. More importantly, this video is for solo players, be it for whatever reason. It's mostly aimed for those who are going in by themselves. In this video, I'll cover what the Netrosel missions are, and I'll also be showcasing some builds for you. So, let's just go ahead and get straight into it, and everything you need to know is also added to the timestamps within the video. Starting things off, what are the Netrosel missions? As mentioned, this is a weekly endgame activity. If you're new to Warframe, keep on trucking until you've completed the Whispers in the Walls questline, and once completed, you'll gain access to these missions. Begin by talking to Tagfa within the Sanctum, and on screen, what you need to know boils down to this. And guys, just quickly, this could be subject to change so if you do find this video a little later and the values or descriptions are different then just keep that in mind and reread what has changed the enemies within this mission are some of the highest starting levels within the game ranging between level 220 to 240 and just similar to the likes of sorties and archon hunts these missions also have some restrictions in place powered enemies means that there's more chance of xmas units than usual but also increasing their health and shields by 100 percent with an additional 50 percent per player joining you within the mission so if you are joining the team that isn't just quite ready yet then you might be better off going in your own and this video will definitely help you prepare for that respawning in this mission is going to be punishing even if the mission takes you quite a while to kill everything make sure you come in to survive first and foremost if you die then you are out and you will have to restart it all over again the consumables will also be limited. In my builds and how I play, I don't really need to worry about this besides from maybe an odd energy or shield pad here and there if I need to fall back onto it. But for the most part, we don't really need to worry about consumables. And finally, the rewards. Now, this part may be the part that's most likely subject to change. To put this briefly, for the level of challenge that you're facing, some of the rewards don't quite feel rewarding enough. You see, the melee arcanes and adapters may be new to the game, but it doesn't interest everyone. And if you already have a fully built arcane, arcane then it's only a little phosphor that you're really getting overall the main reason for doing the mission is for the archon shards and in my personal opinion i'd rather go ahead and get two or three guaranteed archon shards than the chance at five archon shards either way this may be reviewed in 2024 Alrighty, now that that's covered let's enter the anchor hold as we head inside we are met with a room which will be holding four random key glyphs for us to take and you will need to take all four of them in order for the mission to begin now on screen are all eight key keyglyphs and what they actually do. This system is comparable to the likes of the dragon keys that we used to do for corrupted mods and the corrupted vaults. So to go ahead and condense this information down, these keyglyphs are technically going to be debuffs to you whenever you go and pick them up. Six of the eight of them are focused and centered around damaging you, more specifically damaging it to your health pool. And the last two out of eight of them are more so utility based. Either way, none of them are typically supposed to be seen as an advantage for us. But as always in Warframe, there are ways to turn negatives in the positives. I went ahead and did some testing here and I want to give my advice before we go any further. There are two really good methods of survival that you can take here, but it's a little limited to which Warframes offer this type of survivability. Number one, first and foremost, Mesmer Skin. As all good things are in Warframe, Revenant is yet again one of the survival kings. Mesmer Skin doesn't actually quite stop your health from being damaged. In fact, going this route can seem a little scary as all of the key glyphs will actually bypass Mesmer Skin and hit your health. They won't, however, consume any of his Mesmer charges. As long as you have those charges, Revenant cannot drop his health beneath two overall. This basically makes him a great Warframe to use for a survival route. And number two, the other route which has proven to be absolutely fantastic during this whole update is Overguards. See, unlike Mesmer Skin, when applied, Overguard basically creates a new health pool that must be targeted first, and none of the current key glyphs can actually bypass it. And do go ahead and keep in mind that if you do decide to go into a team environment, there are some Warframe who can actually give overguards to other warframes. So if you struggle doing this as a solo, consider a duo with a friend. Right then, now that you or your team have collected all four key glyphs, interact and hack the terminal to go ahead and begin the mission. As we start the mission, we are looking for a particular area on the map in which we'll need to find. Again, this is somewhat similar to the corrupted vaults in Deimos, but unlike those corrupted vaults, this new tile set is absolutely massive and it encourages us to find the pinpoint location by finding and hacking three terminals within the mission. Each terminal location is directed and covered by a white waypoint. So, as you get heading over to these landmarks, I would advise you to bring some helpful ways to increase your movement speed 
throughout this giant tile set. So you can go ahead and do this in a few ways, whether it be particular warframes in groups or if you're playing solo, I typically advise using either Archon Shards for Parkour Velocity, Warframe Mods again for Parkour Velocity, or even the Prados in Cardin for its passive too, Parkour Velocity. You see, all of these methods are amazing for getting around, and I genuinely could not play this mission without them since we're going to be doing it five times. So skipping ahead, now that you have hacked all of the terminals, head over to the yellow waypoint and you'll be prompted to disable the matrix. If you're solo, it's one of the key glyphs that you currently have on you, so you're fine. Just interact with it and off you go. But if you're in a group, it'll be one of the four key glyphs that are split between your teammates. So whoever reaches it first may not be able to activate it. Encourage the other players to go and catch up and everyone to try their keys on the matrix to begin disabling it. From this point onwards, it's a simple blend of exterminate, which is killing enemies within the located zone, then to go ahead and break that flow to go out and find a Netramite drone, in which when you do go and find it, just quickly shoot it to destroy it and head back to that located zone and carry on killing until you lower the security level. And then when that's all done and there is no more security threat, head back over to the matrix and you will now disable the force field, allowing you to enter the Netracel area in which you'll be wanting to loot pretty much everything in here, especially if you're needing the newer resources. More importantly, what you will find at the back of the room is one giant looking urn or breakable pot. Go ahead and smash that and go ahead and collect your main reward from the mission. As you're extracting back to the relay it will identify your reward and show you what you unlock let's hope that you go and get an archon shards as of right now guys you can do this mission up to five times per week again i believe that there could be some changes but exactly to what i have no idea either way hopefully you guys have a better understanding of what's expected from you within this mission Alrighty then clark let's go and see those builds so just really quickly here guys in case you skipped ahead to this part or you didn't quite understand what i said earlier this mission in my opinion for your average player should be approached and encouraged for you to bring a warframe that's to vibes for mostly. The key glyphs in their current state directly target your health pool, and in the meta where we usually apply shield gating, you are actually quite vulnerable if you look at that usual defensive approach. Now guys, I'm not saying that you can't bring the legs of Prote or Hildren, but if you do go ahead and bring them, do consider that the direct health damage by passing your shield gates could go ahead and become problematic to you. You can however use methods like Arcane Grace or Azure Archon Shards as backups to give you some healing back if you do have a corrupted health key glyph applied to you. So there are some options, but my advice after testing was sticking to Warframes that offer Overguard as a survival method. And if you don't have those Warframes ready yet, then even Mesmer Skin is somewhat similar in terms of surviving. When doing these missions, I personally found those Warframes and those builds so much better, giving more room for error if I make a mistake and allowing quicker times to react and re-protect myself once again. Okay, Clug, okay, you're yapping me. Show me the main build you've been using. Sure, guys, here's my Colervo build. In stat priority, I went with range and then strength. Both of these are important for our subsumed ability. However, strength can be scaled further and practically helps everything else within his kit regardless. As for efficiency and energy return, it's always debatable on what methods you prefer. In this situation, you can go for any of these up on screen and choose whichever suits you and whatever that you have access to. The new Grimoire Tome is a good method for giving energy back as well if you're not really using your secondary weapon slot. So consider that as a backup if you do need it. And for this build, duration is situational and flexible. Mine usually comes from my Archon shots. I subsumed in Necros's Terrify ability to give Armor Strip to Calervo. This makes those enemies much weaker to fight against, especially considering that if you do want to go and group up with a team, their armor values would actually scale much further. So any kind of armor strip is actually a good idea to bring into this mission. Necros's Terrify just so happens to require so little strength and has great AoE range around it that it's just too good to not infuse here. Whether you want to go and keep Calervo's first or fourth ability is entirely up to you. If you like melee, then keep his first ability in and and if you prefer to go and use it for teleport and then also go and keep his first ability in. Otherwise, the fights are in zones, so his fourth kind of pays off here as well. Clovo's second ability, Recompense, is just so abusable right here inside this high level content. You see, you can recast it and spam it whenever you need to. And the Overguard Health Pool gives such good quality of life protection that pretty much any Warframe would be screaming to go ahead and take this route as well. I would recommend on most of these builds to use Prime Flow and Preparation to help you get straight into the mission without
without requiring any build-ups. And I also throw in a parkour mod like Lightning Dash because the tile sets are so damn big that it helps being able to get from point to point quicker with added utility like this. As for the arcanes of the build, Energize really isn't needed here, but I like making everything so easy that you can practically switch off your brain when doing this mission. So pairing it with Equilibrium from my efficiency made sense, but I cannot stress enough. It's really not required. It just adds useful quality of life and a bit more of a relaxed mindset. And as for the other arcane, I would flex in whatever main weapon that you're using for killing. If you're looking to go ahead and invest Archon Shards into Kalo though, I would keep it relatively simple. Crimson Shards for strength or duration work great, or any utility Amber Shards like Car Speed, Parkour Speed, or even Starting Energy are more of your go-to options. Now in terms of Kalovo's playstyle and ability rotation within the mission, it's not one that I have to go super in depth with, and that's basically the reason why I like this build and setup, because there's so much room to go ahead and breathe, and making errors doesn't feel anywhere near as punishable. To start off the mission by using Recompense on the first set of enemies that you you see as depending on which key glyphs that you have will depend on how quick you want to go and get that overguard protection to protect you from those debuffs then when it comes to the fighting sections to disable the security use your terrify ability to strip off any enemy armor and you can also combo his storm of yuko into his collective curse to slowly chip away at any enemy's health in your area and it's to know that this isn't usually my main source of damage you see my weapon is but if you do want to go ahead and focus on that combo to be more impactful then add more strength and more duration to the build and you should feel a bit more of a difference and i will go and give you guys a quick small tip if you are fighting a rogue necromech and you have the void burst key glyph on you do be very careful i have been absolutely chunked from the combined damage from both of them so you're not actually fully unkillable here but, you know it doesn't happen that often it's just one to pay attention to if you do enter that situation up next is a revenant build now guys, I won't lie to you. In the previous Clivo build shown, you could simply copy and paste that build over to Revenant and you'd pretty much get the same results. A combination of great survival means a debuff and ability and the rest is history. However, if you don't have that available, then here's another example that works just as well. In terms of the stat priorities, Revenant wants just about as much strength as possible as his second ability, Mesmer Skin, will gain more and more charges depending on how much strength that you have within your build. From there, duration pretty much flows in priority order allowing your ability buff to stay up longer thankfully however most of them have good base duration values so you don't really need that much in your builds and you can focus more on the strength side of things as for your range and efficiency both here are debatable you don't really need much of either and just like the Kalevo build i mentioned earlier efficiency is usually the one that can be covered in many different other ways so it's up to you how you want to go and cover it this route is more focused on buffing weapons rather than debuffing enemies and armor stripping. So whether you assume the likes of Eclipse, Raw, or Zarta's Whisper, all of these abilities will help your weapon damage output and add in that brute force to your DPS instead. Personally, I'm using Zarta's Whisper for my builds. Mesmer Skin, unlike Overguard, will actually let quite a few things hit your health. However, remember, as so long as you have a charge within the Mesmer Skin stacks, you will always be capped at 2 health, not allowing you to die. Pairing this with Rolling Guard can always be a backup if you do need to reapply Mesmer Skin in the middle of combat. Just make sure that you roll before you cast and you should be fine. The Arcanes are usually focused on either stat increases like duration or strength, or weapon increases like damage or utility like fire rate. Whatever suits you, just go ahead and pop it in. As for some Archon Shards on Revenant, I would purely go Crimson Shards for strength. Again, those Mesmer Skin charges are ideal to have more and more of, giving you more freedom to not need to worry about your survival method. And there isn't really a big ability rotation within this set it's simply a run and gun type build start off by casting your mesmer skin to get protection going on and then go ahead and use your weapon buffered ability to help those kills get snowboarded that's pretty much about the gist of the builds it's a good run and gun situation and in terms of some other warframes that you could go and use would be the likes of these on screen in no particular order they all offer builds and give more room for error when playing with the netracel missions especially when playing solo for your rewards and that's pretty much the focus here however within those builds i will quickly chuck up on screen my styanax build which i've shown in quite a few different videos of mine recently you see this entire update screams styanax he has great survival good damage 
and great utility when paired with the Norris Subsumption. This is just an example build here. You can flex one or two things out for the Nexus Cell missions in mind, but again, Stein X is also great, so feel free to go ahead and use them if you want to. And one last time, I'm going to stress it. If you do feel comfortable branching outside of Overguard Protection, then please go ahead and do so. This isn't about what's right. It's more about what's comfortable for the user. Overguard, however, just gives too much quality of life and is a great survival tool aiding you to switch off the brain light switch and get your rewards without panicking or scrambling to go ahead and survive. Weapon build. So on the screen, I'll quickly throw up the build that I've been using, which is a Strun and Carden build. Raw damage, criticals, radiation, and a sweetly rolled Riven. Either way, when paired with Armor Strip or an infused helmet of ability which buffs this further, we'll be seeing some easy ad clearing against level 220 plus enemies. And for what it's worth, there are actually quite a lot of weapons that work here as well. It's more about the investment on the mods that you have available. Obviously, these missions are not for new players or even mid-game players, so expect to bring in your best and continue to learn as you go. Focus schools and the operator setup. So this part will be kept quite short. For what it's worth, run whatever you have and whatever setup you have access to. But to get the most from this, I would highly recommend sticking with Madurai Focus School. And it's mostly for that Void Strike ability. When you pair that with some of the arcanes on your operator's amp weapon, if you do happen to go down and make a mistake, you stand a better fight and chance of self-reviving with a setup like this. Ideally, I would target any low health enemies to finish them off first or a weak unit like the Necrohound enemies or the Murmur Crawling Hands, as they should be a lot easier to get a kill on in comparison to some of the other units that you're facing. So the Necrohound missions are highly welcomed in my opinion. I think they're a little basic, but they could easily gain more depth to them in terms of key glyphs and what else to do inside the mission rather than just shoot, find, shoot, find, shoot. And then finally, fight. Yeah, some more type of style here would be a bit nicer. This could add a little more variety to it, but it will be interesting to see what kind of changes they could make to this game mode further down the line. Either way, any other addition of gaining Archon Shards is helpful as they're their most important reward to a player like me at this point in time. Alrighty then, that's about it for today's video. A friendly reminder that if you did enjoy it, hit the like button or share the video with a friend in need. If you're new, come subscribe. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.